the baseball world to a standstill. Proclamation declared May 6, 2011, Willie Mays Day in San Francisco. In fact, news of his 80th birthday even reached the White House. Willie, this gathering is to honor you, and you richly deserve this attention and this honor. Let me read to you a letter on the letterhead of the White House. Dear Willie, we wish you the very best on your 80th birthday. You have witnessed great milestones in our nation's history over the decades, and your life represents an important part of the American story. As you reflect upon the wonderful memories you have made, may we also look forward to the promise in each of life's moments yet to come. We hope you are blessed by many more joyful years. Sincerely, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. To Willie Mays, President Obama is seen as much more than the nation's chief executive. Do I think he was gonna be president? No. I, I didn't think I would be in my time. Uh, but it was just a, a, a feeling, I guess I was so proud that I just stayed up all night, you know, about six, seven o'clock by myself in the room, just watching and saying, my God, how cool can this be, you know, that we have a, a president uh, uh, into the White House, you know. Good to see you again. trip for me because not only did I uh, have to go with him to St. Louis, but I got a chance to go over the whole plane. And uh, I thank uh, the president many times for letting me, you know, uh, fly to St. Louis with him. Yeah. One of the things I used to see him do when McCovey was hitting behind him is he would hit a double and stop it first. And he didn't do it for himself. He did it for the team. Because if you went to second, you're going to walk McCovey. And uh, that just uh, wasn't a thing to do, so Willie would stop at first. And some of my teammates said, why didn't he go to second? I said, well, you dummy. <laughs> you got the long ball hitter, most feared hitter I saw, and McCovey getting ready to hit. And you don't want him to be walked. So uh, that, that was just great team baseball, Willie. I can swing for a home run, but actually I don't. If I would swing for a home run every time I go to the bat, I don't think I would connect oftener than I do without worrying about hitting a home run because then I find myself swinging too hard and a lot of times I uh, don't even meet the, meet the ball solid. I have found out that sometimes I'm strong enough, if I hit the ball solid, it'll go out most, you know, most yeah. every part of the yeah. field. Meet the ball. Yeah, that's, just hit the ball solid. That's all I want to have in my mind. Hit the ball good. Willie Mays has been called the greatest baseball player to have ever played the game. This 1979 Hall of Fame inductee was gifted as a five-tool player, but it has been his constant giving that has made an equally enormous impact on the world of baseball. You know, we talk about how great a player he is, but for me, Mays is the most generous individual I've ever met. Some people are like to see other people happy. How do they do that? By being generous with their money maybe, or with the material things, or with their time. He did all of that. 
He did all of that. He hit a home run in, in the Polo Grounds for his first Major League base hit, and he hasn't forgotten it, nor have I. No, I, I, like I told Spawn before, I always remember, as long as I can see him out there, I think I have a chance to keep playing. Obvious. Huh? <laughs> well, come well, on, you're still going. Listen, I'm just glad to be here, Willie. <laughs> you have a responsibility to not only be a great ball player, and he was a great ball player, but you also have the responsibility of being a great citizen. And that was one of the things I think that I, and along with other ball players, really admired about Willie was the fact the way he carried himself off the field. You know, a lot of times uh, people bother stars like that, but you never see Willie complain. He's always happy, smiling, laughing, and that's why he's so uh, such a great guy. Are you part of the National League? Do yes. you play for the National League? Uh, would you be my ball team, part of the giant team? Yes. Well, sir, I think I I've got it. you. <laughs> Did you hit your 31st home run today? Do you play center field? Are you say hey, Willie May? Willie's selfless nature extends far beyond baseball. I was with him at a dinner in Texas, and he auction off everything he had on. I've never seen that before. Auction off shoes, pants, jacket, wristwatch, everything. He got about thirty-five, forty thousand dollars for it. But it was for charity. He <laughs> sued. I never saw anything like it. <laughs> Joe Morgan still vividly remembers a trip to San Francisco during his rookie year with the Houston Colt 45s in 1963. It was at the batting cage when he encountered Orlando Cepeda, Willie McCovey, and Willie Mays. He said, Joe, when the season's over, why don't you come by and say hello? And I mean, that was like the biggest thrill of my life, and I called him when the season was over, and you know what he said? Come on over. I went over, I spent the day with him, and he kept me there all day, and when I left his house, I had a car full of golf clubs, sweaters, jazz records, everything. I mean, he just said, Joe, whatever you want, whatever you need, take. I would take five suitcases to New York and put them up and bring them back home, empty suitcases now and bring them back home because all the stuff that the people would give me in New York. And it, I had a rule there at the beginning is that uh, you could come to the house, you could dress up in anything. I had about 15 or 20 suits. Uh, you could dress up any kind of way you want to. You could take your date any kind of way you wherever they want to go. But you must come back and you must get that suit clean so somebody else can wear it and you must put it back in the closet. For an entire week, the students at PS46 in Harlem, New York, made a point to study not just the baseball player, but the man, Willie Mays. Willie Mays is here. Can we give Willie a big hand? In town to share the Giants World Championship with the people and the place where Giants baseball started. This is not all he shared. I'm missing the ball? Yeah. Put it back in there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take it, I swear. <laughs> yeah, somebody got the ball out of there. Hey, we'll get it. I'll we'll tell you what I'm going to do. We owe you a ball. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. It might be better than I that. I know this is not appropriate, but you put out $100 here. <laughs> what? And whoever that ball is missing, give it to that whoever the young lady is. <laughs> Thank you, Willie Mays. Thank you, Willie Mays. All right. Oh, you got two? No, he's right there. He's the one you gave the hunter to. Maybe he'll give it back. Uh, <laughs> but I uh, appreciate you writing about the kids, though. That's the main thing. Yeah. You don't have to write about me. But when everybody's saying, take me out to the ballpark. Yeah, that was magic. It's like, it doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah. If you're 10 or if you're, you know, 80 or 90, everybody knows. Everybody's united. Yeah. Now take me out to the yeah. ballpark. Yeah. I think I'm more at home with kids. Mm -hmm. 
that I am with growing up because the kids are genuine. Mays lived close to the polo grounds, which allowed him to play stickball with the local children on a daily basis. Day games, I had to be up around 9.30 or 10 o'clock to play till around 11.30, then I walked down the street, down the, down the block. And night games, I played to about 4, 4.30. The first base was a car, second base was a car. Then the house was uh, uh, out too. If you hit it over the house, you're out. And they didn't care about that. They wanted me out there because I would buy them uh, 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 ice cream after every game, ice cream, hot dogs after every game. So I have a foundation, hopefully, uh, uh, I don't know how much I can give. I, I like to give 15,000, so I like to do that kind of stuff. I like to see kids progress. They might grow up to be good kids. You never know. You know so that's why I was talking to the, the, the principal, what can I send? If he tell me something that these kids will like, I can get it from. Because I go into a corporate office, I can get into the corporate office, I can get in there. Some kind of way. Who are you going to say, no? <laughs> <laughs> the New York Hilton was a time capsule for these fans. Just the sight of the Say Hey Kid brings these longtime Giants fans back to their childhood. And now, please welcome Willie Mays. <laughs> The ball, I, it's a ball that I caught from Willie Mays in batting practice, the last game that the Giants ever played in the polo grounds, September 29th, 1957. And I saved it, and I've kept it all these years. It's all banged up. You can see it was a batting practice ball, too, and the age has gotten to it. There's so many words, I can't say any more of it. Thanks, Willie. I'd like to shake your hand. Thank you. To shake Willie's hand which I really intended on just doing, just to shake his hand. He was my most favorite player of all time. To me, he was the greatest player in my time. You're my inspiration. Thank you, thank you, sir. All I can say is, God bless you. Say hey forever. Oh, Do you remember that game? No, but you Take your word. <laughs> I'm just enjoying getting praised by uh, one of the greatest, the greatest players of all time. So I'll, I'll... I wish I'd had my video camera out there uh, just to see some of these people's faces and and, and how much joy uh, somebody like Willie Mays and Joe Malfitano uh, brought these people um, 50 something years ago when they played. It, it, me being young, and it, it kind of gave me a glimpse into into what they went through and and uh, their experiences at the ballpark, and that was it was a cool deal. Hey, Buck, Gaylord. Gaylord, hey, hold on. What the hell you doing? I got nothing, Gay. Gaylord. Hey, hi. I have Deborah here. Gaylord, what you bring me? Uh, tonight at the ballpark. <laughs> I'm happy to, for you and your birthday and everything. Oh, yeah. And, Let's keep going. And uh, yeah. I got white hair because you used to hit my hanging curveball. Hey, you finally made it. I finally made it. It was a long swim. Oh, a long swim. People that are playing today, if they understood how much that they could rely on these guys here, that they, Orlando, Willie, the Willies, any one of the players that were great with the Giants will sit and talk with the young guys for as long as they want. As far as Giants players go, there is no younger group than the prospects who come into San Francisco every November for the annual conditioning camp, an introduction into Giants baseball on and off the field. Imagine the impact from the guest of honor. We're all gathered together here, I would like to introduce you to a famous Hall of Famer, Willie Mays, who I've known since 1958. So he adopted me. Well, this is Willie Mays. 
Yeah, yeah, guys, come up closer, because I'm not going to bite you. Uh, when Mike asked me to come, he and I have been here such a long time, we just like doorknobs. We, we fit with the, with the furniture. Whatever comes in, that's what we do. We polish it and keep going. I think it's important that you ask me what you like to know. And I don't care what it is. You just ask me questions, and I'll try to answer it the best way I can, because uh, you just don't want to hear me talk all the time. It's not good. You want to have fun. You want to enjoy uh, what you do every day, and that's what this organization is about. My rookie mistake? Yeah. Man, I made a lot of those. Are you kidding? <laughs> Show me a player that don't make mistakes. That's why, I, that's why they have that E, mistakes. My father probably was about 50, and he played with me for one year. And all he did was hug the line. And I got to catch everything between Sunnyfield and him. So I said, about the end of the part, middle part of the season, I said, Dad, do me a favor. He said, oh, whatever you want. I said, quit. <laughs> and my guy was uh, Joe DiMaggio. Joe could do all the things that I wanted to do and do it well. I never had a cutoff, man. I, I didn't use him. Nobody never came out to catch the ball because they didn't waste their time, waste my time. So they got to stay in the infield <laughs> to cut it off just in case I do it too hard. The catch was, uh, you know, good. they still talk about it. I don't know why they used that one catch. I like I never caught a ball, but one. <laughs> How many guys was on in 1954 when I caught the ball? Two. Oh, you got two? Oh, you heard that. You can't get another book that said that. How many All-Star game was I in? Ten. Oh, shit. You're wrong again, see? Twenty-four. Really, that guy said twenty-four. Yeah, he's right. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let me see what this is. I got to check everything around right here, man. Why am I so dark? <laughs> Look, I got white lips. What was wrong? <laughs> we'll fix this thing. That's your teeth. Huh? That's your teeth. Oh, I'm smiling? <laughs> God, yeah. How many home runs did I hit in the war in the All-Star game? Total. Who said six? This guy's six, uh, yeah, yeah. He said 19, I hit no 19. <laughs> what are you talking about? Can you sign the bottle? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, I'll try. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's okay. kind of hard. Hey, Willie, really, you mind signing my jersey? I didn't sign it. No, this is the one, with, this, this is not the cheap one. This is the good sure one. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Willie May is in there. Who's Willie May? It's a Willie May. Uh, it's a great honor. Uh, you believe that? I never think that I'm going to be in the same clubhouse with Willie May. It's, I think for any baseball player, I think that's why uh, the San Francisco, uh, they're going to be winning for for many years because, you know, it, it's, it's really an honor to see uh, Willie May walking the same clubhouse that you walk. I mean, it's, it's immense. My handshake's got embedded. Okay, yeah. If I take a picture, would you? Who, me? Yes, sir. Get your chair and bring your ass over here. There you go, Mr. Anything, anything you need from me, you just tell me. Okay, good. No, I picked his brain a little bit. You know, I, you have to once you, you know, you sit on the next to a Hall of Famer. You know, he's, he knows the game, he knows what it's about. And um, we was talking about outfield, you know, how to throw the ball. You know, it's just um, how I hit him, how I hit him was, having a good time, you know. But at the same time, I was learning some things about him. Oh, yeah, well, you look perfect. Did it come out? You look perfect. To be the best, you must learn from the best. And Willie's the best. Hey, Willie, Willie, there's this guy here named Barry. Who wants to say hello? Who? Hey, hey, hey. When you have someone coming down to you talking, Muhammad Ali walked in there and started talking about boxing, everyone's going to listen. I'm slow. <laughs> I could only run. I couldn't hit. So Willie's no different in, in our field. Um, so when Willie says something, everyone listens. I didn't realize how many important people that was coming to uh, wish me an 80 birthday. I didn't know I would get this old. <laughs> so when I came here today, I uh, thought it was going to be a small crowd. 
But all the people that I know that was here, boy, this is great. This is a great, great outing for myself. When Peter McGowan came to me and he says, I want to make you a lifetime giant. And I says, I don't need to be that right now, Peter. He says, no, you are a lifetime giant and you will be. He said, how much you want? I said, it's not the money, Peter. It's the enjoyment of being with this franchise. This is a classic franchise. They do things the right way. They take care of all the, the people that come along. This is after I got I retired now. And I says, if I ever need help, will you help me? And he said, yes, that's all I needed. No contract, no nothing, just a handshake.